Welcome to another edition of Journey of Hope. Stories that people share of their journey through life. Each day when we wake up, we have no idea what lies before us. The psalmist says, today is the day of the Lord. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. You know, there's a saying that goes around that troubles come in groups of threes, or when it rains, it always pours. Well, our special guests today are Lewis and Cindy Burns from Medford, Oregon. And they've got a fascinating journey that they've been on for the last several years and particularly the last uh, several months. Lou and Cindy, it's good to have you here. Thank you. And uh, we're going to share with our listening audience about the journey that both of you have been on. But uh, tell us a little bit about your, your background. Where are you from, Lou? Originally from, <clears throat> from the California Bay Area. Okay. Uh, grew up there, went to school there. Went in the service. Uh, moved Graduated from high school there? High school. Okay. And moved on um, in the service. And after the service, uh, worked for a little while there in town in the Bay Area. And then got back into the produce business, moved to Southern Cal, and uh, that just wasn't working out that, that well. So we picked up and moved to Medford, Oregon, and been there ever since. Okay, well, there's some chapters in there we're going to take a look at in just a minute. But what branch of the service were you in? In the U.S. Marine Corps. In, in the Marine Corps. And uh, I understand you had some special training for the that, uh You were in some kind of winter training or oh, something. Oh, cold weather training before they were in a rush to... The Korean War was just ending. Okay. And... Uh, they had experienced during the war some very cold weather, so they wanted to rush us through cold weather training in February, and um, that was uh, that was an experience in itself. That was the mind. So where did you go for this cold weather training? Uh, uh, the Marine Corps base uh, on the backside of the Sierra, behind Yosemite, called Pico Meadows. Pickle uh, metals. Pickle metals. All right. Well, that was, should have been a good experience for you. <laughs> Fortunately, I understand you finished your training and then you didn't have to go to Korea. Uh, we did go. Oh, you we, did go. We were moving equipment uh, out of Korea to Japan, to Okinawa, to Iwo Jima. We're just moving equipment around. And, okay. and that was basically... Yeah. Uh, well, I, I remember reading about what the, the war that went on there. And apparently they had some terrible cold cold winters. Well, we'll find out a little bit more about your education background, some of the business you're in and why you're in that, but Cindy, tell us a little bit about where you're from. Well, I was born in Sioux City, Iowa and raised in Portland, Oregon and until uh, grade school and then moved to California, Sacramento area. Spent the rest of my uh, years there, Went to, uh, graduated from high school in Placerville, okay. California, returned to Sacramento, went to work for the state, retired from the state and um, during that period of time, I married and went to Salt Lake and then returned to Sacramento. <laughs> and uh, as such as it was, that marriage didn't last very long. And then uh, I remarried, I was married 32 years. Okay. So, uh, in fact, I think you and I discovered that I was in Sacramento the same time you were there. Right. I was going to, going to Sacramento State. So, uh, you work for the state of California. Yes. And what, what were you doing? Oh, well, I started Multiple out... Multiple jobs? Uh, yeah, lots of different jobs. I started out uh, as, the, as a seasonal uh, employee in 1959 and retired in uh, 2003. And uh, I retired as a benefit program specialist with the CalPERS. And had how many years in working? 25 years. 25 years, mm -hmm. okay. So, Lewis, uh, you were in the produce business for a little while You after you got out of the service. How did you get into the produce business? <clears throat> Uh, my family, my parents uh, farmed in a large way, uh, row crop farms, vegetables, lettuce, cauliflower. Up in, in California area. In California okay. area. They had a packing house. They had a box factory, made boxes for produce. And um, after I worked in town uh, in sales service job for a container company, I finally realized I didn't really care to work indoors like that, be tied down to a desk. So I went back home, went to work in the packing house, met lots of, uh, lots of buyers that came and went looking at produce and um, got to be friends with, with a few of them. And uh, of course, this is a younger crowd. And I thought, well, they lived a pretty good life. That's 
Sounds, Sounds like, like, like it'd be a good time. So one day I went home and told my wife at the time that, um, what do you think if we moved to Southern California? And she said, what? Why? <laughs> Anyway, in long story short, we did, we moved to Imperial Valley and um, worked there for three years. And, and as a new buyer, and yeah, I, could, I could see the end of the tunnel, and it was starting to squeeze in. And there were large buying org organizations. Larger and larger. So, <clears throat> had done quite a bit of traveling in the Northwest, Canada, Washington, Oregon, calling on people, and had a real good friend in Medford. So the wife and I made a trip up there one day, and we spent a couple of days with them, saw the neighborhoods, and, and uh, we fell in love with the area, and said, we're moving again. And um, we ended up in Medford. Okay, so and you have how many children? Three boys. You have three. Okay, so and then, if I remember correctly, you're in the produce business, and then you got into the lumber business, and trucking, and you've... You've just kind of reinvented yourself uh, yeah. over yeah. and over again and, and had a number of different things. Now, for our listening audience here, uh, you folks have been married for just about nine months, right. if I that's understand correct. correctly, <laughs> coming up on nine months. But there's a lot that's transpired here in the last 10 years. Uh, you'd indicated that uh, you'd been married and then uh, that one didn't work out, but then you married again and that lasted for 32, 32. years. But uh, what happened to your husband? He died of cancer in 2006. He was diagnosed in February and died five months later. Okay, and what kind of cancer did he have? He had lung cancer. And it went very, very quickly. Yes, he did. So, and you were, uh, had a happy marriage and things were going yeah. well, and then cancer comes along. Uh, and how has your health been prior to that? Well, in 1984, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Okay, in 1984. Okay, yeah. so we're talking about a long, reasonably period of time ago. Right. And uh, we'll, we'll find out about what went wrong, what happened there and how it's been progressing. Uh, Lewis, how's your health been prior to the last year or so? Um, other than the diagnosis uh, this past summer uh, for prostate cancer, uh, it's been... I would say it's been excellent. So have you had any cancer in your background? No. Okay. Uh, well, yes, my mother had breast cancer. Your mother also had breast cancer. Mm -hmm. But uh, she was treated and apparently did it's fine, fine with, that, with yes. that treatment. Okay. So uh, you were diagnosed just about a year ago, are we saying? This no, last, no, it's less more than like that. 10 months ago. 10 months ago, you were diagnosed with prostate months, cancer. Or nine okay. months. So, I mean, were you diagnosed before you and Cindy got married? No, it was, uh, well, yes, it was before, it wasn't yeah, it? Actually, you had, your PSA was high and the doctor no. called you, but you didn't return the okay. phone call. <laughs> okay, so back in the, the mid-80s, you were diagnosed with breast cancer. Yeah. So what, what happened? I mean, what uh, kind of treatment Well, I originally I'd gone in for a hysterectomy and they found the lump on my left breast. And so they decided to check that out first. And then the next thing I know, I woke up, told me I had breast cancer. And uh, so I took a couple of days with my husband and, and we... Uh, hashed it over and decided to go with the, the, at that time they did a subcutaneous mastectomy, he just shelled out the inside and. That's uh, not a radical. No. Okay, no. so they just kind of take. Okay. Right, and uh, so, that, but he did the lumpectomy and then two months later he did the mastectomy, I'm sorry, back up, he did the lumpectomy, woke me up two days later, I had the mastectomy. And then uh, a month later, I had a hysterectomy, and then six weeks later, I had uh, reconstruction. Wow. So originally, did you originally th think you're going to have a hysterectomy? Right. And if, as a result of that, that's when you really found out you had the breast cancer. Right. You go in for a lumpectomy, and you find out that it's pretty serious, and at that point, they're recommending a, 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 some type of a mastectomy. What right. did you call it? They called it a subcutaneous mastectomy. They went underneath and shelled okay. everything out. And so you're scheduled for the mastectomy. Is the reconstruction before you have the hysterectomy? No, I had the uh, hysterectomy in July and then the reconstruction in September. Okay, and we're talking about back in the mid-80s. Right, Okay. 84. So is everything going along fine? Everything with that one went along fine, and because of the problems I had on the left side, uh, in 1985, we decided to, to take the, the uh, do the same thing with the right side. So be proactive. Right. Or... So we, he did the lumpectomy, then he did a mastectomy, and then in February did the reconstruction. 
Well, it did not heal. I had an incision about uh, an inch long that just would not heal. I had been in pre-op three times, and the doctor chose at that time to stop the surgery. He said everything was looked better. It was going to be fine. Well, uh, this was before they completed the mastectomy. Now, no, it, I had the lumpectomy, the reconstruct, uh, the mastectomy. This was during the reconstruction period of the second of the second okay. side of the right side. So uh, it, the incision was about an inch long. It did not heal. I was in pre-op three times to have it removed, and three times they, he canceled it. Then uh, in uh, about June of 1986, the same year I had the reconstruction, um, it just kind of decided, the infection decided it wanted to take care of itself, and it just kind of broke loose. And uh, I was in a grocery store with my 10-year-old boy at the time. So I drove well, you'd over. You say the infection broke loose. You got an infection in the breast, of, it, and it, yeah, and it's it almost just, like a, just a broke, kind of like uh, burst. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so I mean, things are going all over work. Right. I was in a grocery My. store, and it was a mess. So uh, I contacted my husband, who was working out of town, and we contacted the surgeon and uh, told him that we were going to have the uh, the implant removed. Period. So we made arrangements to uh, have that done in the next couple of days. And uh, then I, in the meantime, I uh, was under the care of a psychologist and, and a, uh, a general practitioner. And uh, between the, the three of us, we decided I needed to see other doctors. So I contacted three doctors, and they gave me options on what to do. And I selected one doctor and had a, a, another reconstruction. That one went fine. And since 1986 until uh, 2010, I've been cancer-free. Okay. All right. So when did the two of you meet? In January of 2010. In January of 2010. And uh, how did you meet? <laughs> on eHarmony. On eHarmony. <laughs> so he was on eHarmony, and you were on eHarmony. <laughs> Well, I've, I've met a few other people that met on eHarmony, and uh, the ones I've met before, they were very, very pleased with the way everything went. So tell me, when, uh, how, how, did, how did you finally meet her? You, you got acquainted through the internet on eHarmony, and uh, it must have been. Tell me about the first time you actually met her. <clears throat> well, after the internet, we started, we talked on the phone a few times, and I was getting anxious. So I said, how about I come down? And she's and in Sacramento me. at this point? In Sacramento. Okay. So I drive the 350 miles down. We prearrange a, a day. I think, I believe it was Sunday. Maybe it was Saturday. It was Saturday. And, um, Meet and greet. And I found her street, and then I'm thinking, is this, do I really want to do this? Yes, I do. So I drove up, parked. <sighs> getting a little tense and walked up to the door and I, I don't know if I knocked first or if she came to the door about the time I, anyway, we met then and um, we decided, okay, let's, let's go have lunch and we can that visit. That was a safe thing to do. <laughs> so we but went. But been visiting really for a few months. Right on the online, internet. Online and the telephone. And on the telephone Emails. and exchange pictures and one thing and another. Right. Okay. So you go out for lunch. So we go for lunch, and uh, we sat a nice restaurant in Folsom, Old Town Folsom. Or, well, it was right, right there at Old Town Folsom. And um, we visited at the table a little longer than what it would take to eat lunch, maybe two, two and a half hours. I don't know. But there was another table next to us that could hear yeah, a little bit of what on. was going on. And uh, the waitress kind of got caught on to a little bit of it. And uh, we, a strange, strange story though. From there we didn't, we're, you know, what do we do? I'm not ready to go home yet. So right. she says, we can go down to the mall and uh, we can sit in the Visit courtyard there. area. Sure. So we go to the mall, Sunrise Mall, I believe it was, and right in the center, in inside there, the nice table around and there's nobody sitting around there except one old gentleman, and he was about three tables over. We sat there and we visited, started learning a little bit about each other. And I kept glancing over at this fella, 
and he, he was like he was leaning, leaning your way. trying to hear. I don't think he was, but it, it, appeared. it appeared that way. And he, he was there the whole time we were, which was quite a long time. And uh, he kept looking at us, looking over that way, and I kept glancing over at him. In fact, I mentioned it to Cindy that the little old gentleman over there is watching, is watching or listening. So we left from there. Uh, I was going to take the end of the day and going to take her home, and I've got to drive back to Oregon. And I mentioned to Cindy, I said, you know, that little old man was almost like an angel sitting there watching over us. And, and to this day, I still feel that it way. It could have very well been. Isn't <laughs> that great? Well, so anyway, out of that, a relationship developed. Yep. And you got married uh, not coming up on nine months ago. July 8th. July, okay. Uh, you got married in July, July the 8th. And uh, if I remember correctly, didn't you go to Hawaii? <laughs> we went to Hawaii on the 14th of October on our honeymoon. Okay. All right. When, when did you find out that you had cancer? When was before it? Before we left. It was before you we went, went to Hawaii. Yes. Okay. So, and, you know, you're not, you're not really anxious about it. You know, you've got cancer. You've got some different options that you're going to uh, pursue. And uh, were you anxious for him? Well, uh, the way we found out I was anxious, he was out at, at the property and, and he didn't want to fool with it. So he called the office and told them that he wanted them to give me the information. information. And I'd already known what the information was because they told us before we left, if the doctor called, it was positive. If the tech called, it was negative. So the doctor had called me. So I hurried up and called Lewis out at the ranch and told him, you got to call uh, the doctor's office. He, they need to talk to you. I didn't say the doctor called. Well, next thing you know, it, it, it's back in my lap again. And after having lost a husband, a, husband uh, a few years before, I did not want to tell him. And so the so doctor called. He, so he gets the word that the doctor wants, and he says, hey, call Cindy, yeah. give her the information. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the, the technician so the then called because that. he knew the doctor had already called me. Right. And knew that I was quick enough to catch on. So uh, I said, okay, fine, thank you. So he came back, and, uh, and after the, I got off the phone, I, go, I look up and I go, okay, Lord. <laughs> I know I've already gone through this a few years ago. I don't need, and not uh, knowing anything about sure. prostate cancer. But it's cancer. Yeah. yeah. I don't need this in my life again. Yeah. And uh, so he came home and uh, I told him and he was, you know, well, I've got it. I've got it. You know. So what are we going to do about yeah. it? So anyway, to celebrate your wedding and your marriage, you went to Hawaii. Hawaii. Okay. And if I remember, some things happened there. <laughs> I mean, you know, you don't just do things the nice, no, easy no. way. Uh, we spent four days uh, in Honolulu, wonderful days, fast and furious. And then we were set for uh, seven days of just R&R &R in Maui. Mm -hmm. And we were really looking forward to it. And we, on the 18th of October, we flew over to Maui and we took the shuttle over to um, get our rental car. Lewis got off the uh, shuttle in front of me and I stepped off and broke my foot. Can't believe it. So you got a broken foot. So that kind of <laughs> all but terminated your time and your experience right. there in in Hawaii. So you come back. So let's come back to you now because okay. you get some news. Right. I go into the doctor and I'd already had um, in 2009. I was in an automobile accident and my implants ruptured. So I had those replaced and uh, some of the silicone had. Uh, been released and we thought that we got it all but then there a lump appeared on my breast and which was I thought was silicone and so when I went in for my foot I mentioned this to my doctor and she says she, and she's not looking in the, in the right place and she says well there's something over here and I'm going okay and she says I want you to go have a mammogram so in the meantime she uh, has me put a, a boot on uh, and crutches and so I go have a mammogram, and so then she calls me. She says, well, I want you to go for an invasive uh, ultrasound for a biopsy. So I said, okay. And she says, I think you have breast cancer. I said, I can't have breast cancer. I've, I've already had breast cancer. Yeah, 25 years ago. Yeah. So uh, it came back positive. 
So Lewis got diagnosed the 1st of October. I broke my foot on the 18th of October. And the end of October, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in the same breast. So a double whammy. So almost 25 years later, right. you find out you have breast cancer. So the two of you make your way to Loma Linda, OK? And you're finishing up your treatments. You're getting ready to go back to Medford. Tell us how it's been going. You're getting treated with Proton and you're getting treated. Uh, yours is just kind of like a vacation, a radiation vacation. I mean, I've been working with, with you guys for the last several years and you come and, and everything is fine. So I want to know who's the caregiver here? We both are. You're both the caregiver. <laughs> you're undergoing both giving, undergoing treatments. And I understand that really the hospital just kind of has really worked oh. it out. Tell us about it, Cindy. Uh, well, in December, we, we uh, made arrangements to come down before Christmas uh, to, uh, well, I thought I was just going to have a second opinion. I went through a barrage of uh, appointments. I saw a general surgeon. I saw an oncologist. I saw a radiologist. Uh, they made an appointment for another invasive uh, ultrasound uh, for another biopsy. Uh, with that one, uh, they were going to put chips in. They also wanted to check the lymph node. Uh, and so that was set up for January. Lewis had a little fly in the ointment. Uh, he was, had, since we got married, we'd want to change him over to my insurance, which was better of the two. He wrote a letter to his insurance company in, in the office saying that we needed to cancel this uh, insurance. Uh, they didn't follow through on it. And of course, Medicare fell through the cracks. So when we got back, he, he got denied that his insurance wouldn't cover it. So we're scrambling when we get back home, on the telephone on the way home, doctors calling us on the way home to set up appointments and so forth. So we get home and finally, about what, two days, three days before we get down here for, to start all of this, uh, the insurance, we call Medicare, we get a hold of his insurance company and they finally cancel it. My insurance has him on board already. So we get to go ahead, and he gets his appointments set up. I, my appointments are actually set up the week before his start. So you come down here, yeah. and how's the hospital, how's the medical group been Oh, here? it's unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. Um, there's a, a navigator in the system for breast cancer people, and she works with Dr. G, I'm going to call him, because sure. I can't pronounce his name. And uh, she's fantastic. Great. She's just absolutely fantastic. I was getting a little frantic from the time of the biopsy to the time of my treatment starting because it was supposed to be two weeks and, and I was having other tests done and so forth and he was going through uh, his setup, his pod uh, for his proton treatment and uh, she was just wonderful. So you, while you were undergoing proton uh, for your prostate cancer, you were undergoing, did you have ke chemo? chemo? Chemotherapy. Okay, the idea, the, the, the initial plan was to have chemo, and then what? Uh, chemo, then surgery, then radiation, and then reconstruction okay. if I opted. And that. I know you have an appointment coming up just before you head back, and uh, the last time you went in, what did they tell you? They couldn't find the, the mass. I've had three treatments, uh, four hours three long. Three chemo, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, when I came down in December, they agreed with the doctors in Medford that it was one and a half centimeters and that it was uh, attached to the, to the uh, muscle. So then in December when I came in, my uh, oncologist says, well, I think it's smaller than it was in December. So then I went in in February for my checkup before I had my um, next infusion, and he says, I can't find this lump. And so he went ahead and scheduled me for the third just to make sure, and uh, he says, I don't know where this lump is. And it's a higher power. I looked at him and I said, there's a higher power than us, you know. <laughs> and, well, and, that must have been marvelous news. Oh, yeah, it was fantastic. So right now we're in the process of another MRI, and the general um, surgeon and the uh, oncologist will get together, get their heads together to let me know whether I need another infusion or not, and I'll have that at home in Medford. Okay, so I know you're getting ready to go back. And how's the, how's the treatment been going for you, Lou? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It just, um, it, I think a drawback for some of the other proton patients is not having a wife that's going through cancer yeah, treatment. Right. Because I've had, I've accompanied 
Cindy on almost all of her appointments. And I've seen what they've done for her. They've, they've made room for her. They accommodate her. And right. the people have been so good. And I talked to the people uh, about scheduling my treatment to coincide where I can be with her. And they accommodate us. In, I mean, every move, every step of the it's way, they've done something. Mm -hmm. It's faith and, and attitude. Well, it's, you know, we're glad. You know, nobody comes here by accident. You've heard me yeah. say that many, many times. And, and the two of you have just demonstrated a remarkable spirit. And you're right, there's a higher power. I mean, the two of you have been putting your trust in the Lord. And he's, uh, this has been uh, not a devastating experience, but it's been, a, it's been, a, it's been a, a, quite an experience for you. But you are on that journey of hope. And uh, I know that our, our time is coming down to an end here, but I want to thank you for, for being here. You didn't come by accident. Oh. I want to thank you for sharing your experience because there are others watching right now, but they've just got some sobering news and you've, been a dem you've demonstrated to them that you, know, you, don't, you don't have to be stopped in your tracks. You folks are what I call not only survivors, but you're thrivers. And for those that are in the listening audience, you know, Lou and, and Cindy are remarkable illustrations of people that have been confronted with some sobering news. Both of them had cancer at the same time, but they've looked on and they've looked to the Lord and put their trust in Him, and He's opened and closed doors, and they're finishing up their treatment here at Loma Linda, and they're going to go back, and they're going to be ambassadors, and they're going to be able to tell what the Lord has done for them in their life. Again, for those of you that are looking on, I'm, I'm Lynn Martell with Journey of Hope, and we thank you for looking on and, and for your prayers and for your financial support. Until next week, God bless you each one. Look to him. He'll open and close doors for you just now.